Can you hear me well? Yeah, please. Please start your talk, Vladimir. Uh -huh. uh, my name is uh, Vladimir Katalov. I'm from Elcomsoft company, which is based in, in Moscow, Russia. Uh, we have about 25 people in, in our team. And for last 20 years, what we're doing is uh, uh, we deal with the uh, security, security of the applications, or uh, more exactly, the, the encryption used in, in applications to, in, to encrypt the, the data. And so our products are uh, about breaking the, those encryption and password recovery and password cracking. I won't tell about software, our software at all. Uh, this, this speech is only, uh, is only about the... Uh, some points of encryption in uh, Apple, Apple iOS operating system and Apple iCloud. This is a kind of, of fresh statistics about the smartphone market. How much of, of those devices are using Android, iOS, Windows Phone, and, and Blackberry. Um, and the, a, a total of smartphones now is uh, more than a billion and it is expected that in, in two or maybe uh, maximum or three years, it will be more uh, smartphones than, than people on Earth. And they, uh, uh, those devices contain a, a lot of mission critical data, your private data. Uh, they used widely in the corporate environment, in, in government uh, organizations and, and, and so on. And uh, there is basically all your life and, and many of your business inside it. And, and so there is a hard need for forensics, uh, so to, to exploring the data stored on the uh, smartphones and, uh, and, and tablets. We'll co uh, concentrate only on Apple iOS devices. Uh, there are different methods to, to get the data out of the uh, smartphones based on the operating system used there. There is a logical acquisition, which is simplest and, and fastest method, and uh, which uh, gets most of the information out of the device. There is also a physical acquisition, which is much harder to perform and, and sometimes requires uh, uh, the special hardware. There is a chip off, that's the most advanced method, uh, which requires you, uh, it is destructive, uh, you need to, to extract the memory chip out of the, uh, out of the device and read it using the special hardware. And in many cases, you also need to decrypt this data, and it is not always possible. As you can see, you can perform the chip off uh, process for uh, BlackBerry devices, uh, but for, for Apple uh, iOS operating system, it isn't possible because the encryption keys used to, to store the data they are valid only in the context of running operating system. Uh, and most of the devices, they also create the uh, backups of the data for your own safety and, and convenience. And those backups uh, can be local on your computer, PC or Mac or Linux or whatever. And uh, uh, Apple iOS devices as well as uh, Windows Phone devices can also create a backup in the, in the cloud as a built-in feature of the operating system. And you can also analyze uh, uh, those data. Uh, next, um, many, uh, most of the operating system can also uh, store their, uh, your own data, your documents in the cloud, about the same way as the backups are stored. And there is also a very good of, um, source of the information you can get. And finally, there is a location service for uh, most of the devices, so you can uh, get the exact location of the uh, device right now. Uh, speaking about the uh, forensics about Apple devices, I'm sorry, it's probably the text is too small, but I will share the copy of this presentation. Uh, for the uh, physical acquisition, it, it, it's not easy to, to perform. Uh, for iPhone uh, 4 and, and all the models, there was a publicly, uh, publicly available the boot ROM exploit that allowed to, uh, you to upload your own code uh, unsigned. Obviously, um, uh, the Apple uh, won't allow you to, to sign uh, your exploitation code. And uh, using, 
using those exploits, you can uh, up upload your own uh, RAM disk right to the Apple device and uh, running in the kernel mode, you can perform the uh, complete complete copy of the uh, device uh, right to the computer using that uh, standard uh, DD command. For more modern devices like uh, Apple 4S and Apple 5 and Apple uh, 5S and, and 5C, there is no boot room exploit, unfortunately. And the only way to, to perform the physical acquisition is to, to work with the jailbroken device because it, it can run the uh, unsigned code. Uh, if you cannot perform the physical acquisition, the next step uh, you can perform is that, well, I should, should also say that for physical acquisition, the passcode protection implemented in the OS actually doesn't matter. You can uh, create a you know, almost complete image of the device even without the knowledge of the passcode. And also you can perform the brute force or dictionary attack on the uh, passcode. The only problem is that the uh, passcode uh, verification in iOS uh, operating system, it is performed right on the device only. You cannot run the offline attack using the GPUs or supercomputer or FPGAs or whatever. And the speed of recovery is uh, extremely low. It is only five or five, uh, five, four or five passcodes uh, per second. For iPhone uh, 5, it is, um, I think about 15 uh, passcodes uh, per second. So only simple four digits uh, passcodes uh, can be cr uh, cracked. But as I said, the passcodes in iOS are used to encrypt uh, only part of the information on the device for additional encryption. Uh, without the passcode, you cannot get the mail stored in the, on the device. And also you cannot decrypt most of the data stored in the keychain. Uh, I will explain what is keychain and what it uh, includes a bit later. Uh, okay, well, if you, if you cannot make the physical acquisition, the next step is logical acquisition. Uh, for iOS, you only need to perform the backup of the device. Uh, you can do that. Mm, uh, two ways. You can do that uh, using the uh, iTunes or you can connect to the device uh, uh, directly and task the driver to, to perform that. Uh, the backup uh, uh, created by the device uh, is uh, actually contains uh, a lot less information than uh, you can get using the physical acquisition, but it is still quite a lot. It's all the call logs, it's uh, uh, all your messages, SMS and uh, iMessage, uh, that's uh, your mail, your address book, of course, uh, all the data stored by all the applications running on the device, your pictures, videos, music, music and, and, and so on. Oh, sorry, music is, is not included into the local backup. Uh, the next one is uh, advanced logical acquisition. There is a way, and uh, I will also uh, talk about it uh, a bit later, uh, to connect to the device using the, lo uh, using the driver, uh, which is working over the, the USB, and to connect to the service running on the iPhone all the times and to extract uh, some information uh, out from there. Uh, using that, that driver, no, uh, using that service uh, running on the iPhone, uh, you can also perform the backup, but there, is, uh, there are some commands to, to extract uh, actually more information than available in the backup. And uh, probably the most interesting stuff, you can uh, get information from the iCloud. Uh, there is a way starting from uh, iOS 5 to create not the local backups, but to uh, uh, upload backups to the uh, to the Apple iCloud. It is actually much more convenient than creating the local backup because you, you not always have your notebook or computer with you and so iCloud backup can be performed over the Wi-Fi and it is incremental so it doesn't upload all the information all the time and but only the changes since the last backup. And so if you lose your iPhone or it is stolen or broken and, and so on, 
you can just go to the next shop, buy the new one and restore your device in a just a couple of hours. The, the, first, the first protection of the iOS device is, uh, uh, is the passcode. Uh, it is very easy to set and very easy to, uh, to enter and you can set up to the device to, uh, to be unlocked uh, right now or it can be locked in, in 5 or 15 minutes after not, not usage. And uh, uh, there is also a, an encryption inside the iPhone. It, it doesn't depend uh, whether you use the passcode or not, but the passcode is the uh, most important and, and probably the most safe method of the protecting uh, your iPhone. Uh, as, uh, as I said, for modern devices starting for iPhone 4S, if the device is not jailbroken and uh, it is protected with the passcode, there is absolutely no way to get any information uh, from there. There is also a special storage uh, inside the iPhone, uh, uh, more exactly iOS operating system uh, called Keychain. Uh, it is a kind of database which stores a lot of critical information like encryption keys, uh, certificates, uh, passwords to Wi-Fi access points you ever connected to, uh, passwords to email, saved passwords from websites, and, 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 so, and so quite a lot of information. And this keychain is encrypted also using the, uh, the passcode. And so e even if someone will be able to, to get everything from your device, uh, but the keychain will be still encrypted if, if the passcode isn't known. And there are three, uh, three types of the passcode. Uh, the, the simplest one is just for digits. Uh, next, you can select the digits only, but uh, any, any length. And uh, the most safe one is uh, alphanumeric of any length. But most people, of course, use the just for digits. It's not, it's not very convenient every time when you need uh, to unlock your uh, iPhone to enter a long sequence. Uh, a quick about uh, our backups. Uh, according to, to Apple websites, uh, uh, the knowledge base articles, uh, uh, here is what it is, uh, what kind of information is in, in the local or iCloud backup. It's obviously all contacts, uh, that's your messages, uh, call history, the data of all applications, of course, more, uh, all of the settings of the device, the camera roll is all your pictures and, and videos, uh, the software you bought, uh, mail accounts, both set up, and, and, uh, but not the cached mail itself, and network settings, and, and, and so on. Much more, actually. And to make a local backup, you just start the iTunes and, and select the device backup, and, and that's it. Uh, for iCloud, uh, it is performed automatically once a day when your device is connected to the power source and to the Wi-Fi network, or you can force creating the backup yourself, just pressing a button. Uh, here is a simple program right actually in, in, in China, and it is quite cheap at 15 or 20 dollars, uh, which works with iTunes backups. Uh, they're encrypted also. Uh, that, well, uh, it's not encrypted, but I would say obfuscated. You'll just get a, uh, about a few thousand files with uh, long genetic names and, and they're not readable. There are many of them are SQLite databases. The other ones are PList files known to Mac users. And uh, this program, uh, among uh, many others, it shows all this information in a very convenient way or the device type, model, number, uh, whatever, and you can also browse the, uh, your mails, messages, and, and, and everything. There is also, there is quite a lot of information which is not shown by, uh, by, by those programs, and you cannot get it just by using iTunes. Uh, for example, all Apple applications, there are about two dozens of them, 
of course, uh, save their own data in the device. And they're not visible, but you can get them by analyzing the backup. These are also mostly the SQLI databases. Also, you can get the data from the social networking applications and uh, messengers like WhatsApp. From Facebook, uh, Skype, you can get all the conversations uh, from there. From the Foursquare, LinkedIn, uh, Viber, and so on. And there is quite a lot of other data. Uh, for example, there, is, uh, uh, there are a few files on the iPhone which store the uh, keyboard buffers in, in, in all languages you're using there. And by analyzing uh, this text, uh, you, can, you can see what the person, the owner of the device actually typed anywhere in the browser, in messaging, in the mail, and, and, and so on. There is also the data from the passbook application, so you can see his, uh, his, for example, boarding passes and so on. There is a database with the user's uh, voicemail. There is a map data to track the locations where, where the person that searched for some location and visited them and, and, and so on. And there is also the database uh, called loc uh, Location D. And, uh, I think that the file name is actually consolidated. You probably remember the scandal about Apple, uh, about privacy, about two or three years ago, when it was found that, that iOS, uh, uh, iOS devices store the, uh, most of the locations you ever visited and write them down into its own database. As Apple explained, that was done for faster searching for uh, GSM and uh, Wi-Fi networks, and those data were, were private, never sent to, to Apple, and, and so on. But still, uh, this information is there. Uh, also, from the backup, if you are smart enough, you can get the attachments for the messages, for MMS and messages and iMessage. And we have found that even if you delete the conversation, the attachments, the pictures, for example, or um, data cards attached to received or sent messages, they're still stored, uh, stored there. And there is no way to, uh, in the iOS to delete those pictures. And so there are also stored the separate folder which stores all the pictures from your Twitter posts or from the posts uh, you, you ever seen. There is stored also the last backup date and time and there is a lot of information about Wi-Fi access points uh, you are connected to, including the SSID, the single, uh, signal strength, the security used there, and, and, and some, sometimes even the GPS coordinates. Uh, here is a more advanced software. I will I will say the name. That, that, uh, that's not an advertisement. Which explore the uh, backup more deeper way and more advanced way and extract everything it can from the, from the backups, including the pictures from, uh, from attachments. It can sh show the timeline, what the person, the owner, is, was ever doing there, and, 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 and so on. That's not the, uh, the only software. There is quite a few of them. And they're very convenient and, and very useful when you analyze the, uh, the contents of the yeah, iOS device. In iOS 7, it was implemented a nice feature called uh, frequent, uh, frequent location. Uh, it is hidden very deep inside. You have to go to privacy settings, then to location services, then to system services, and, and there, there, is, there is a frequent locations. It is uh, switched on by, uh, by default, and it stores the database of the locations you ever visited. And, uh, it even write down the exact time when you arrive to this location and when you leave it. You can see on, on, on those pictures, there is uh, in the center, there is a Moscow city, and uh, at the top, there is a uh, 26 visit to my home, and the next line is, is my office. And uh, the elsewhere line, it's uh, the, uh, the, right, the right one, uh, is the other locations I, I ever been to. I don't know actually uh, how 
uh, how the size of this database is limited or does it override the data or just keep it going. It is known actually. Uh, the, it isn't very well uh, documented by Apple. And as you can see, uh, for every location, it stores the, uh, it stores the exact date and, and time. And uh, there is also an option called improved maps, uh, which uh, says that uh, it actually sends uh, the uh, GPS locations of the places you ever visited to, to Apple. And it is said that it is implemented to, to improve the maps. But as you can see, it is, uh, in fact, it is associated with your Apple ID and, and so it is not as private as we want it to be. Uh, also in the, uh, in the iPhone 5S, uh, 5S, there is a uh, quite nice uh, Touch ID feature uh, to unlock your iPhone using your fingerprint instead of a passcode. And uh, Apple says uh, that this information never leaves the iPhone and uh, it's not stored in the backup, neither local nor no iCloud backup. But unfortunately, uh, we never know and we cannot find, uh, is it really so or not without the jailbreaking the iPhone? And at the moment, there is no jailbreak for iOS 7 and, and so we cannot say is it true or not. Uh, probably you have heard about news. I think it, it has been revealed on uh, Black Hat conference that uh, someone found a way to, to hack into your iOS device when it just connected to the charger. And it was called like mal uh, malicious chargers or like that. Uh, you think that you are ch just charging the, your iPhone connected by your USB cable in the airport or in the restaurant and, and, and so on. Uh, but uh, in fact, you connect not to the charger, but to the small computer, uh, which communicates to the iPhone using uh, its own protocol. And what could be done, actually? Uh, the computer on the other side can perform the full backup of your iPhone uh, to access your file system, many parts of it. And it can even install, uh, install the application, any applications on your iPhone without your knowledge. Uh, there is only one, uh, one uh, actually two things which uh, protects you uh, uh, from that. First is the passcode. Uh, to be able to communicate with your iPhone, uh, it should be unlocked. Uh, but usually when you connect to, to the charger, you, at one point you enter your passcode and, and so unlock it. And uh, starting from this point, uh, the software running on the other side can, can access all your data. And the second thing, which was implemented in iOS 7, uh, there is a warning and the iOS 7 is able to detect what is on the other side. Is it just a charger or it is a computer? And if it is a computer, it, it, it asks you uh, whether you trust it or not, but most people usually uh, answer yes. And uh, I personally encountered that when I tried to connect uh, my phone to the, uh, to the entertainment device on the uh, transatlantic flight and it had a USB port. It, it wasn't, uh, um, I think that was not the, to, to insert your flash card to play the media cards and was only for charging, but still, there, is a, uh, there was a computer on the other side, and so there is some risk. How it is being done? Uh, when you unlock uh, your device connected to the computer, uh, there are pairing, uh, so-called pairing records created on both the device and the computer. And on an iOS device, it is stored in the library lockdown folder. And on Mac, you can find it in DB lockdown. There is, uh, on the right side, there is a screenshot with uh, all those uh, parent crackers. They're from the, for the different iOS-based devices I ever connected to my home Mac. And what you can do if you, if you have those parent crackers? 
You can actually talk to lockdown daemon, lockdown D, uh, always running on the device. And you can connect to backup service and ask device to perform the backup and try it from the USB, start reading uh, the data. You can access the software installation service, talk to it, and also ask to, to install the software on the device. You can get most of the uh, device information, including device name, model, and, and everything, your phone number, your unique device ID, and so on. You can access the sync service to synchronize the data between the computer and the device. You can get the uh, diagnostic information, various log files, and, and so on, and even install the uh, device uh, provisioning profiles, install them or delete them, and, and so on. And to get more information about that, about the pairing, explore it by, uh, by some uh, our security researcher, you can follow the links. And there is even a library, open source uh, library, uh, portable for different system called LibMobile device, which you can use in your own applications to, to talk to the iPhone or iPad or iPod. And using this library, you can perform a so-called advanced logical acquisition. Uh, for jailbroken devices, you can get actually the complete contents of the uh, uh, device file system, even the locked files, which are uh, usually not, uh, not accessible to the applications running in the user mode. Uh, as I said, it can get all the device information all the media files, and not only pictures and videos, uh, but also books and uh, even iTunes library, which don't go usually uh, to the device, but uh, only uh, you can uh, only keep the records of what music was there, or if you are not using the uh, iMatch service. Uh, for the application data, you also get the much more than for backups. You can also get the temporary files and cache folder, uh, which is always there for all applications, and it content, uh, contains a lot of interesting data, for example, the websites you access to write from the application and, and so on. All the messages, address book, uh, keyboard cache, I already mentioned. Uh, for SQL, SQLite databases, you can get the write-ahead logging files to, to see the transactions to the SQLite database. And, and, and so on. And so, this kind of acquisition work, even if the passcode, is, uh, even if the device is passcode locked, you, can, uh, you only need to get the pair locking records from the computer, for example, from the SAST computer. Uh, the other interesting point is that this kind of acquisition can be performed over Wi Fi. The initial uh, pairing should be performed uh, through USB. But uh, once you get those pairing, uh, you can talk to the device through the USB or through Wi-Fi. And probably there is even a way to, to connect over the GSM network. But we never know. We, we haven't seen anybody uh, doing that yet. And all you need to have, as I said, is a small single file from the computer. Now let's go to the iCloud. If the local backups are not accessible, you can work with uh, uh, iCloud backups. In both Windows and uh, Mac systems, there is a very convenient iCloud uh, control panel where you can set what data you are going to, to sync. And uh, going to backups, you can see the list of the devices which has been ever uh, backed up to the, to the iCloud. You can see in my case, there are three. The, the, these are two iPhones. I'm not sure because, oh, why, why two. Uh, it should be only one. And the iPad. But here in the control panel, you can only see the size of, of those backups. And if you wish, you can delete them. And that, that's it. You can just get them. And the only way to use the iCloud backup is to restore the device to it by just entering the uh, Apple ID and, uh, and password to it. Uh, so, we have started to, uh, to explore how is it going to work. What is the uh, protocol used to backup and to restore the data. 
uh, there is no way to uh, to back up to iCloud, uh, to iCloud right from the iTunes. You can do that only from the device. And so it becomes much more tricky because you, uh, you cannot uh, debug the application of working on the iPhone. So we get the jailbroken iPhone. We install to open SSH there. And we get the keychain out of the device. And we have, uh, after the deleting the iCloud account and resetting all the system, uh, all the settings, uh, so the restoring process uh, should start. Uh, we have just replaced our uh, certificates in the keychain, and so to be able to to sniff the traffic between the iPhone and uh, uh, iCloud services using using basically any sniffer. And so the, uh, the certificates used there to talk to the cloud services, they're not pinned to the device. And, and so it was quite easy to perform like in the middle attack. Uh, basically, what we have found is the, the locations are uh, dynamic. You, you, know, uh, you never know in advance where the data is stored. And uh, endpoints uh, depends on the Apple ID. Uh, the protocol is, is based on the um, Google protocol buffers, and all the files which, which go to the uh, iCloud backup, they split it into the chunks. These are portions of data of a variable size. And uh, Apple uh, provides a file to chunks mapping using a kind of XML files. And every chunk is encrypted using its own encryption key. And encryption key depends on the chunk data, and all the chunks stored not on the, uh, in the Apple data centers, but on Amazon uh, Cloud and in, in Microsoft Cloud. Uh, here is a map how the, how the files are actually stored in the iCloud. As I said, they are split into chunks. The reason for that is to, uh, to avoid duplicates and to keep the data in the iCloud more compact and also to make it easier to perform the uh, incremental backups. When you first backup the, uh, your iPhone into the iCloud, it actually uh, takes uh, quite a lot of time, maybe two or three hours, depending on the size of data. The next day, it uploads only the differences. So it's usually about 100, maybe 200 megabytes, and the third day, and, and, and then, it's only 10 to 20 megabytes, for example, the, the updated SMS database. Here is a query to, to perform authentication in the iCloud uh, to get access to backups. And it returns, obviously, the authentication token. And, and here is an example. Uh, then there is also a series uh, of uh, queries to, to work with, actually, the backup. and. Uh, there are different queries to, to get the exact location of the data of the next chunk. And another query to get the encryption keys used, used to, uh, to decrypt this data. And to actually uh, download files, there are also different queries to first to enumerate snapshots. Snapshots are uh, so-called partial because, because only, only the first one is complete and, and the next two uh, using only the differences of, of data. And then we get the file authentication tokens, which are different for, for all the files. And then we get uh, the locations for the particular file chunks, which are related to this file. And then that's, that's probably the most interesting stuff. The previous query get, uh, returns the location of the next file chunk. And from time to time, we have seen both uh, those are actual locations on the Microsoft and uh, Amazon services. And at the moment, uh, we don't know whether the backups are always stored on the both service or half of the backup is, goes to Microsoft and half of the backup goes to, to Amazon. I think uh, there is a kind of redundancy there and the backup is stored on both locations. Here is some technical stuff how the, the encryption is implemented in the, in the iCloud. It also looks small, but uh, once you get a copy of the presentation, uh, you, you'll see it better. 
It is uh, a little bit different in iOS versions uh, 5 and 6 and, and, and then in iOS 7. The encryption is basically uh, the same. It is AS256. Uh, uh, and here is a routine which uh, generates a, in a, in a initialization a vector for uh, IV for the, uh, for, uh, for the encryption. It, it's, it's not quite complex. And the encryption keys uh, are always stored along with the data, uh, as I said. So a kind of summary about the iCloud backup encryption. The data is stored uh, on the third party services, uh, not on uh, Apple services. The Apple has all the encryption keys to, to your data and, and so if, if it gets a request from NSA or whatever, it can encrypt it and, and provide to third parties. Uh, some, some data is encrypted additionally. For example, the, to, to decrypt the keychain, you have to, to get the, um, the keys which are related to your particular uh, hardware, and it is never being sent to, uh, to the Apple. And also, uh, you, you, you cannot perform your, your own encryption on the, on the data and the data is only encrypted uh, the way the, the Apple has implemented that. Next about Find My Phone service. Briefly, because I don't have much time. Uh, you probably used it by entering your Apple ID and, and password. You get a list of all your devices and, and their locations. Uh, the protocol to, to access the Apple uh, to, to get the locations is somehow similar to one used in for backups. You also have to, to perform authentication and get the, the token, and then you have a query to, to get the current location of the device, but it will be not actually the current, but the one which is uh, cached on the server. But by using the other request, you can ask the Apple service to refresh the location and Apple sends the push notification to the device and it returns it current location. But the, the device battery is being, um, is being used very intensively when getting the GPS location. So don't, don't use it too often. Uh, here is an example from the demo application we have written, which accepts uh, just the Apple ID and passwords and uh, get the list of all the devices and the exact location, the level of the battery, and the time when, when it, it has been last seen in the network. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, the Apple iCloud stores not only the backups and the location of your data, by, but also the documents from the iWalk package. And to get the files from the iCloud, you also have to perform all, all the steps, like I mentioned, for uh, backups and, and the location ID. Uh, there are a series of queries, the uh, post queries with uh, also Apple ID and data, and you get the authentication token in return. And then uh, in, in return, we get the, uh, the list of all the files stored in the iCloud. And uh, basically through iCloud control panel, you can only get the uh, iWork documents, uh, which are keynotes, uh, keynote pages and, and numbers. But uh, using the specific queries sent to the iCloud, you can also get the, the other data uh, from there, uh, from the data for the applications which are using the iCloud as well. And for iWork application, we have found that in iCloud, there is not the, um, those data is stored not in native Apple format, but you can just get the map like an XML files and the text is stored in the SQLite database and the pictures are stored separately. And there are special comments to, to request the, this document in native Apple format or in Microsoft compatible format or in PDF. This is also an output from the demo application to which is I show, which shows a list of the, of the documents stored there. You can see that this uh, Apple uh, Pages file, but it is split into many different files. Uh, quickly about Apple two-factor auth authentication. It is actually good and makes your experience with uh, Apple account much more secure. 
But the problem is that it only protects your, only your Apple ID site and your, basically your credit card. But it does not protect access to your backup stored there, to your documents, and to your location. Uh, about I, uh, I saw an uh, iCloud keychain, that's probably the most interesting part. You can ask the iOS to synchronize your data from the keychain, which are basically the passwords, credit card data, and so on, to be stored in the iCloud, and you're able to sync it between all your Apple, uh, Apple devices, which are iPhone, iPad, and, and Mac. And so you have to set the security code, which is four digits only, and you have to set the, uh, like a security password, which is used for, for recovery. Usually, you can get access to the keychain but only by asking the Apple to send the verification code to one of your trusted devices, for example, for iPhone. And you receive the SMS message from the Apple, and you have to enter it uh, uh, to get access to the keychain. And once you set up the iCloud keychain, you, know, you have in the keychain access utility, you have a new, uh, a new database uh, uh, which stores all the, your iCloud. Uh, uh, this keychain is actually uh, cached on, on your device. I'll skip that. Okay, yeah, here is set up. And uh, once uh, I, I connect uh, from my Mac to the iCloud, I have to enter the recovery code. We have investigated a little bit the protocol used there and found there is quite a lot of components in the operating system that uh, interacts with uh, iCloud. This, uh, uh, these are several diamonds running on the Mac operating system. Obviously, it was much easier to, to explore the uh, uh, the, the code running on the Mac then on, uh, rather than on the iOS device. Uh, there is a driver which works with uh, local storage on the, on the key change and uh, there are diamonds which communicate with each other to, to, get, to get the data from, uh, from Apple to, to encrypt the queries and being sent there to decrypt the responses and to store the information in the local database. Here is by basically a map how it works. Also, sorry for small text. Interaction between the diamonds running on the, on the Mac and the components uh, running on the Apple size. And uh, uh, there are, uh, here is a sequence of, uh, of sync query. Uh, well, uh, the Apple keychain uh, is stored uh, as, as any other data in the Apple iCloud. Uh, basically, you can read the information about the iCloud storage in the Apple uh, website in the knowledge base uh, about the same way. But the information stored there is encrypted with the keyback, which is a collection of the keys. The keyback, uh, keyback itself is encrypted uh, with its own encryption key. And to get access to this encryption key, to, uh, to be able to decrypt it and, and so decrypt all the chain, you have to enter your security password, which you uh, set up, uh, the recovery password, which you set up on the first step. And here is a query, actually two queries, oh, no, just one, to get the key chain. And by using the different parameters with the next uh, query of, of the same time, you, you get the key back. And once you go got the keychain and uh, key back, you only need to get the decryption key. And here is the query to uh, to get the key uh, to get the key back key, the key which is used to to encrypt and and decrypt the the key back and and so get access to the data. There are two requests there. One is the SRP uh, in it, and it return some, uh, some binary data which you have to insert to the, to the next query uh, called uh, recover and then it returns the KBAC key and uh, once you got it, it is being uh, uh, cached locally in your operating system so next time when you start it, you, you don't need to, to enter the recovery password to, to get access to the keychain. So, the conclusion about the Apple iCloud. 
this is obviously a balance between the convenience, uh, privacy, and security. You, you can get only two of the three. And uh, if it is, it will be very secure, it will be uh, very convenient. But uh, you have to understand the security risk because, as said, the, the information stored there in iCloud, it is accessible to anyone uh, who has your uh, Apple ID and password. Uh, which uh, this information is usually secure, but there is quite a lot of social engineering methods to get it, and there is also a problem of password reuse. And two-factor authentication obviously don't protect uh, your your data. It requires still a lot of work uh, from uh, from our sides, mostly on the iCloud keychain. We have reconstructed a lot of queries, but we still don't know exactly yet whether Apple and, and so all the law enforcement or whoever has access to your data. Uh, probably they do because uh, for the other uh, authentication uh, with the uh, code, four digit codes sent to their device, there is not quite a lot of uh, mm, combinations to check. It's only four digits, so only 10,000. And so probably there is a chance for kind of offline attack to try all those combinations and, and so get, get complete access. But once you understand all those risks, that's up to you to use the iCloud services or not. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions? I will share a copy of this presentation and if you need any explanations or whatever, you can catch me over there. Okay, thanks. Thank you.